Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service. We're thankful for those of you who are in the parking lot, and we're thankful for those of you who are online. Uh, we greet you in the Lord this Sunday morning. I wanted to just update everyone to begin with on a couple of, of, of prayer concerns and family matters. The Shirks who are in Texas are okay. We want to remember the Texas folks in our prayers today. And of course, we want to continue to remember Crystal Plemons and her family. Of course, her father, Bobby, died in a house fire in Jamestown on Thursday night. And uh, his funeral will be uh, on Thursday in Lebanon. So very sad news. And uh, so we hold uh, those folks in our hearts. And let us now prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. Please join me in our call to worship. From water to wilderness, God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes near. On stone and in hearts, God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes near. From the ancestor of nations to the sun lifted up, God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes near. God of the Jesus can sympathize with us in our weakness, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please join me in our prayer of confession. God of mercy, we begin this Lenten season in confession. We do not live according to your ways, but according to our own. We condone violence, ignore injustice, and use power to our own advantage at the expense of others. Forgive us, we pray, when we're tempted to follow paths other than those you set before us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence.
Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's a joy to be here with all of you today on this brisk Sunday, the first Sunday in Lent. I ask you to join me in prayer. God of mercy, you promise never to break your covenant with us. In the midst of the multitude of words in our daily lives, speak your eternal word that we may respond to your gracious promises with faithfulness, service, and love. Amen. Listen now for a word from the Lord from Genesis chapter 9. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds and the domestic animals and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living thing that is with you for all generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love this text. I love this text today for a multitude of reasons. Number one, it is a reminder that God loves us. And I think we can never have enough reminders that God loves us. Number two, it shows that God is capable of changing God's mind for the better. Number three, everybody loves a good rainbow, especially a queer person like myself. And number four, this one might seem a tad bit strange, but I actually wrote two different papers on this text in seminary. This passage bookmarked my first and last semesters at Princeton Theological Seminary. And what I find most beautiful about this passage and these papers is that my argument flipped completely on its head over the course of three years. See, my first paper was written for an Old Testament exegesis survey class, just as complicated of a class as it is to say, and that's where you learn how to critically explain texts. 
I wrote a decent paper on this passage and how the use of this bow word meant a rainbow, as you typically learn in your Sunday school classes growing up as a child. Other uses of this word throughout the Old Testament typically infer a bow like a weapon, but I had a case and sources to back me up. That interpretation was not appropriate for this passage. But three years later, I was in a queer hermeneutics class, also complicated to say, but a class where you wrestle with how we interpret texts. I returned again to this same Genesis 9 passage, but felt completely different about my argument. Once again, I found a variety of sources and turned out a solid paper, proclaiming that God was promising nonviolence from henceforth, and we were called to do the same. I have to tell you, I have no idea which interpretation, if either, is correct. I can see a case for either one. One is a testament of a God who creates beautiful things to remind us just how much we're loved. The other is a call to embody God's love through living well and putting down our weapons. But what I find more meaningful than either paper that I wrote is God's ability to change my mind. I don't say that because I am good at changing my mind. Honestly, there are no other illustrations I can think of in my life where I can change my mind so naturally or easily. But God gave me the information to evaluate my context and come out with a different opinion on the other end. And I turned out okay. I find it neat that this experience happened to me through this specific text, a text in which God changes God's mind. Now, I know that statement can be a little scary. If God can change, what does that mean for us, a sinful and broken people? Fear not, friends. Looking at the times that God's opinion changes, it is always for the betterment of the people. In Exodus 32, Moses is coming down from receiving the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai to find the people worshiping a golden calf. God was ready to destroy the nation. But the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. God also had second thoughts about making Saul king after hearing all of the destruction and devastation he was bringing to the people. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 11, God says, I regret that I made Saul king, for he has turned his back from following me and has not carried out my commands. The people of Nineveh in the book of Jonah are also also part of this fortunate bunch because God saw their works, that they had turned from their evil ways, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The list goes on and on. And all of this follows this promise from God in Genesis chapter 9 that God will never again destroy all of humanity. I hold fast that this is a good change. I also think it's neat that this text is the text we get for the first Sunday in Lent. Lent is this difficult time of preparation and reflection. We sit with our brokenness, our sin, our desperate need for God for 40 days, not including Sundays, so that we might better understand the significance of the death and resurrection that is to come. 
Our Genesis text shows how God models that behavior for us. God sat in the mess that God caused. The Lord is considering the divine relationship with all of creation. We heard this so many times in the text. The birds and the domestic animals and every earth and every living thing of all flesh for all generations. And God chooses to relent. To give up harmful ways that don't truly embrace the loving nature of our creator. So I wonder how this text might be speaking to us today. In this second Lent of a worldwide pandemic, following a contentious political election, surrounded by pain, disappointment, and grief, I wonder if we need a colorful reminder set in the sky for us to know that God is truly with us. A refraction and reflection of light that ensures relationship between us and the Almighty. Or perhaps we need a promise of healing, a ceasefire, a rest from the division, hurt, and heartbreak that has overshadowed for far too long. Much like my previous academic papers, I do not have the answer. Maybe it's neither. Maybe it's both. But what I do know is that this time is important. A time to reflect, to return, to repent. A time to surrender, to prepare, to come home. I believe this passage of promise and change helps us do just that. So I'd like to invite you in joining me in checking in this week. To actually pay attention to what we need, where we are, what God might be calling us to. In the end, no matter which bow we decide we need, may it represent for us the promise of God's great love for each and every one of us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Kelly. I was remiss in not introducing Reverend Kelly Spencer. She is a Lake Fellow in Parish Ministry at Second Presbyterian Church in Indianapolis. She's with us once a month. And Pastor Kelly, as a person who preaches a bunch, I just want to say it was great to hear a good sermon for a change. So thank you for being with us and for blessing us with your presence and your ministry. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks, O God, for your rainbow of grace that is above us and is over us, even when skies are sunless and gray. But nonetheless, your grace is present. Help us, Lord, in this time of Lent to open our hearts to you and to our neighbor in new ways. Help us to check in with you and to remain connected to you, that we may deepen our roots in your grace and that we may share ourselves in love for the sake of our Savior and your world. Gracious God, we pray for our world, our nation, and our community We remember all who are suffering from this blast of cold. We pray, Lord, your grace upon them. and We ask, Lord, your special grace for all who are suffering tragedy at this time. We remember especially Crystal and her family. We're thankful that for her father, Bobby, that pain and suffering are past and that he is now alive and whole in your life and love forever. Walk with Crystal and her family in the days ahead. Grant them your strength, your comfort, and your peace. And secure in them, in their hearts, the hope of the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
O oh God, we pray for all who are in need of healing, for all who are ill with the coronavirus and those who are quarantining. We ask you to continue to bless Becky's brother, Mike. Be with Deb and Noreen and help Deb to continue to recover from his surgery. Bless Noreen's friend, Patricia. Be with Debbie. Bless Jim and Becky. Pour out your grace on Susan's friend, Jan. Be with Roger and help him to remain cancer-free and COVID-free. Bless Dick and Betty and Shauna and all who are in their family. O oh Lord, we pray for Paul Myers, the father of Pam. We ask that Paul will remain in good health so that Wednesday's heart surgery will go well. We ask, O oh Lord, your grace for David Phillips, who is in hospice care. Be with Carrie, Marty, and Stephanie. Bless Bill and Linda. Lift up Peg and Alan and help Barb's vision return. We ask your grace as well upon those who are grieving for not only Crystal and her family, but also for Nancy, for Mandy, for Kyle, Brittany, and their family for the family and friends of John Haynes, for Jim and Rob, for the families of Helen and Arlene and Betty. Bless Don and Dottie. Strengthen and be with Kevin and Laura. We ask your grace upon all frontline and essential workers and all who work in our schools and all who study. We ask, Lord, your protection for Hillary's grandfather, Lloyd, we ask, O oh Lord, your prayers for all who are risking their lives to protect us. Bless them and keep them safe. O oh Lord, we come with many other burdens and concerns, and we would ask that you would help us to surrender those before your throne of grace, trusting in your steadfast love and mercy. So in that mercy, Lord, we would humbly ask that you would receive now these, our silent prayers. O oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth And set the heaven on my birth Set the heaven you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I dance with the stars
friends, let's rest assured, we do not have to have the answers. <laughs> Instead, we are simply charged to have an open heart, an open mind, and open arms, just as God has embodied for us. As you go into this week, may you be filled with peace, knowing that Christ goes before you to plan and prepare your way. That the Holy Spirit walks beside you as friend and companion for the journey. And the God of the universe is above you, calling and reconciling your life now and forevermore. Amen.